All right, traditionally Mondays uh, are not very big days in the market. They're usually very low range, small volume, but not today. A little bit above average on the range again. Uh, so like the fourth day in a row now, the S&P has had above average range. Of course, I had the small cap index, uh, Russell 2000, and now it's had one of its biggest four-day returns that we've had in a long, long time. I had to go all the way back to uh, the reopening trade, right, uh, to have a four-day return like we've just barely had of almost 8%. So continuing its move for the fourth straight day of a, of a percent or higher um, that doesn't happen very often uh, has been traditionally pretty bullish for the small cap index. Obviously one big outlier and that was uh, November 2021. We'll take a look at how this move compares to that move and, and if there's anything uh, that suggests we might have a similar fake out pattern or whether or not uh, we might be uh, headed uh, towards a nice good return for small caps um, by the end of the year. Uh, with uh, yields uh, falling. Yields did not fall today, uh, so that had its impact elsewhere besides the Russell 2000. So we'll talk about the sector rotation that's continuing and how uh, how likely that is to continue uh, going forward. Uh, and then we'll take a look at our trade of the day in one of those cyclical areas that are not your, you know, not among the mega cap names uh, for a stock that's breaking out, very similar to recent uh, trade ideas. So we'll go ahead and show you how to trade that one. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, July 15th, 2024. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. Hey, before we get going too far, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, this icon here, the red subscribe button down below. Click the thumbs up icon to like our video. Comment on anything that stood out to you today. Join our website at MarketScholars.com for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right, including our Market Outlook Live video. Um, this is where I take a look at old trades. We got out of one uh, today. I uh, got into our trade uh, that we posted in the video before the market closed. Uh, so check that out. Come down to the bottom, click this heart. It opens up this tab. Hit that like button there. Same thing here. Click this thumbs up, up icon. Hit that like button there. Um, that helps us get our content out to all of our followers. So thank you to those who do that day in and day out. And those who don't, you can do right now while you're watching uh, with one or two really easy clicks. Uh, help us get to our goal of 100 likes on our Market Outlook tweet. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. You can see we um, have second straight up day. Uh, we've only, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 10 days have been to the upside. So 90% win rate over the past two weeks. Uh, we did, uh, if you look at where these highs are, 56.42 and 56.35, we closed just barely below those highs. Uh, so trying to break out, we did get up to a new all-time high uh, today, intraday high. Uh, the intermediate line is actually an all-time uh, closing high because you see the close over here. Well, just two points off all-time closing high. The intermediate line is above the 90th percentile still, so very strong intermediate posture. The uh, market sentiment line here is in the upper reversal zone uh, strongly. I mean, it's almost above the 90th percentile itself, and that's pretty rare, right? It's been up close to it over here. In fact, it did barely get above it at the beginning of the year. Um, so it's, it's a very strong market forecast pattern uh, itself. And then now you have your near-term line coming out of the bearish territory. So here we go, two days, right? It takes two days to go from below the in bearish territory, so anywhere below the 40th percentile, to the upper reversal zone. Otherwise, the odds of a bearish near-term peak rise. So that's what we want to avoid. So one day we're up to the 54th percent. So we have to expect, considering the trend, especially considering how strong the trend is, we have to expect that the next peak, especially since we didn't get a bearish one, the next peak will get, tomorrow's move will get up to a higher high and we will move up. The near-term line will get above the 80th percentile and will be up back and up there again so we'll see now the momentum line hasn't gotten there and if it had today it would we'd feel a lot better about it so that is a little bit of a concern that here we are on the first day and the momentum lines below the near-term line so if you look at for example over here um the last near-term rally uh so on J july 1st by july 2nd the near-term line was above the upper reversal zone uh 59th percentile but you see the momentum line was above the near-term line so that allowed the near-term line to keep going uh, if you look over here, uh, that was our bearish peak. So let's go back to our last bullish peak. Uh, so on this day, we were the first day up above 
This was the first day out of bearish territory at the 54.5 for the near-term line. The momentum line was at 69. So again, a higher momentum line on that first day um, than the near-term line. Again, you know, suggesting there's a good chance the near-term line will follow, right? Over here, first day out was, um, yeah, it was this day right here. It would be May 3rd was our first day out of bearish territory for the blue line at 72.2. The momentum line was at 91 so again above the near-term line so a good chance that it will it will continue higher uh, this is a little different right even the bearish peak it was higher on the first day here the momentum lines are lower than the near-term line and that's not common that's actually very uh, rare for that to be the case um, over here you can see our first day out uh, was also the momentum line was below the near-term line and we ended up not getting the bullish peak, right? It ended up being a bearish peak, and that ended up being the end of it. So, so a little bit of sign to watch here. I mean, that's um, again, there, there's a lot of you know really basic signals this market forecast chart has um, that um, that we've been teach like that that invest tools or TD Ameritrade has been teaching about it for years and years and years. Very basic signals, clusters like we highlight here intermediate confirmation signals we talked about quite a bit this was an intermediate confirmation signal we talked about last thursday uh, near-term divergences where you get lower near-term highs with higher highs so something like this would have been like a near-term divergence to the downside uh, or to the upside or slightly higher high not very much of a higher high there but you get the idea those are all the very basics but there's a lot of nuance that's the benefit of this particular indicator is how these lines interact with each other so there's a lot of nuance to that. And that's kind of what I've been teaching here at Market Scholars for so long uh, since we've started. Um, and this is one of those things, right? You know, how the near-term line you know, is, is expected to get a bullish peak or not. Again, nothing's 100%, so it still could, but the odds are a lot lower than normal, right? It would be a very high probability if the momentum line was, say, at 71 or 72, like way up here. Um, but it's now a much lower probability because the momentum line is not even not only just below the near term line, but it's actually also in the lower half of the chart still. Right. So that's the S&P and the Nasdaq looks pretty similar. The momentum line is in, both of them are in bearish territory still, but the momentum line is still below. But again, they're still in bearish territory. So it needs to be that first day out of bearish territory that we're not quite there yet on the Nasdaq. We'll take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial. Uh, which has had a really good run here lately. It's brought the near term, the intermediate line from neutral territory for quite a while to finally breaking out into bullish territory up above the 90th percentile now. Again, its near term line made that run that we just talked about in two days. Actually, I think it made it in one day. Um, no, two days, 63 and then up to 90. Um, but that first day, the near momentum line was at 97. So again, very good chance. Uh, that it gets up there and, and market sentiments rising now almost above the 60th percentile itself so dark green shading and a green line looking really good for the dow jones and then the russell also is the russell is just insanely bullish here lately strong near-term pattern uh, an intermediate line crossing above the market sentiment above the charts midpoint above the 60th percentile uh, into bullish territory now is close to crossing into the upper reversal zone very good chance that it will and we are, you know, pretty high above the 30-day moving average. And, you know, it's been a while since we've been this high on this run over here. Um, but it's a good, good breakout pattern, 6%. Um, so that's how the market forecast chart looks. When you look at the weekly chart for the S&P, again, as of right now, one day into the week, uh, we are very high, 97th percentile of where, how big this gap is over the past three years. Uh, it is a higher Hakanyashi close. It is a slightly higher high so far. Uh, on Monday, so that's going to be the case. Uh, now we might not finish with a higher close, but a good chance. It's a pretty good distance here. We'd have to really drop um, uh, this week for that to be the case. And it doesn't look like we will uh, drop so far, at least considering how we've opened up the week. So good, good run, and you can see just how we just continue to be bullish. A very good bullish trend here, and, and you can also see how the Russell just really turned around. Look at that big candle. Like this is one of the biggest candles. Uh, that we've seen there's only been a couple of other big ones here um, happened to be the peak in july uh, august 2022 and then over here also happened to be the peak uh, in december at the end of last year and, and we had a little bit of a decline so here we are already with that size of a candle uh, we'll see hopefully hopefully this is not the peak uh, of that obviously three green arrows across the board 
Uh, the Q still has one red arrow, uh, but at least it still has a green line, and it's only one red arrow, and the Russell and the Dow looking very strong. Uh, the MACD histograms, especially on the IWM, is very strong. In fact, if you look at how strong that histogram is, let me zoom out to like a couple of years to give you some context on just how big this histogram is. I mean, that's really, really big. It's higher than any other level in the past couple of years, including uh, this move in 2023. Uh, if I were to zoom out five years, again, follow my cursor all the way over the left, you can see uh, there was some pretty strong momentum in June of 2022. We failed, ultimately faltered there. And you can see also uh, back over here, coming off that the, the uh, COVID low uh, with some strong momentum. And so this is about um, the strongest momentum move that we've seen uh, with strong volume, three straight days of one and a half times the average volume uh, on up days there. Uh, let's look at the some other oscillators like the DMI. Uh, the, AD, the ADX now for the S&P 500 is above 45. So big time move. Uh, really only this move has exceeded that. Lots of red arrows. You're now see on the pause, the negative indicator. You are at 7.07. .07. The lowest it got over here was 7.05, uh, so it never did get below seven. Uh, so you can kind of see and again now. You know, eventually that it kept going up to higher higher lows, but we just kept going up. So that doesn't necessarily mean um, that we have to uh, drop. Um, but if you look at um, you know the positive indicator, which is interesting here. You know, it just barely got above 40, um, barely here, I uh, got above 40, and yet your ADX is just taking off without it. So it's very lagging, which means that IWM, which has had its second biggest uh, directional index move ever. This is the second biggest ever, but this is the, the other one didn't come from the ADX being below 10, right? It's very rare for the ADX to get below 10, much less be below 10 for multiple weeks. Um, and then to break out with a move to the second, like barely the second highest level ever for the positive directional index. I mean, the last time we were this high over here, um, your negative indicator was at below 10. Your negative indicator is it's not even below 15 yet. So big, sudden, sharp move uh, on the Russell 2000. Again, you could argue one of the most explosive moves that we've ever seen on the Russell, literally. Uh, on the Russell 2000 here, when you look at it from this perspective on this indicator. The uh, still above 70 on the S&P, uh, same thing on the CCI. If you look at the weekly uh, RSI, it's up to 78. Uh, again, third time it's been this bullish uh, on the weekly, uh, previously below, before COVID we got this bullish. Uh, we were really, really bullish in 2018. Um, so this isn't the, you know, this isn't the most extreme you can kind of see, but it's Pretty darn close, right? Um, even though it's not as high as what we got in early 2018, it's really, really darn close. And you can see the CCI is still very strong and, and still is strong on the daily chart as well. Your Russell 2000 has exploded to the upside, again, from being at neutral levels forever uh, to getting above to, remember, this is the highest CCI that the, the Russell's ever had, uh, up to three, what, 361. Still is above 200 on the pullback. Uh, as the RSI has gotten up to 75. There's your weekly CCI is up to 200. Um, so very, very strong move there as your RSI is at 65. Um, let's take a look at the um, Ichimoku cloud. Uh, very strong trend, still very mature trend on the S&P 500 and the Qs for that matter. Uh, now let's look at IWM and you can see now we are that close. I mean, we went from again, not having any trend forever uh, to now be in a huge rate of change over 26 days. Um, in fact, when you look at this move on a rate of change basis over you know the past four sessions, this is one of your biggest runs that we've had in the Russell 2000. Um, here, let's go. And, and the S&P is not even up 1% in those same four days. The Russell's up seven and three quarters percent. Again, this is uh, the highest move uh, that we've seen since uh, the reopening trade, right? This four-day move coming off of um, the election and reopen trade. So right here, uh, the low point of 10.30 um, by 11.5. This would be the election. Uh, we were up 7.9% uh, in four days. And, and you can see early, you know, later the next year, we were up to, uh, had a four-day run 
Uh, so very, very strong run. Uh, we also had a move off of that low point in 2018 where we had that strong of a move. Uh, same thing off of the low point in 2016. Again, with the election move there. Uh, and then you have to go back to some of these other instances. So uh, it's not common. It's pretty rare. Uh, but it's, it's a very, very strong move. And we're not coming off of a low point. We're coming off of you know, a significantly sideways move here. Uh, if we look at the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Channels, the S&P is actually still uh, above the Keltner Channel, and it's uh, below the Bollinger Band, but barely, like you're in the 95th percentile there. Strong momentum still. You know, again, you know, this, this uh, momentum move, you can see we had such a strong move there, we didn't get any negative momentum for a long time. We're doing that again. Even though we had periods of red dots, we're doing that again. We also did it um, over here as well, right? So this other move over here where we had a good long run with some red dots in the middle, but no mo negative momentum. A only a little bit of negative momentum there where we had a longer run. So, you know, again, you can kind of see how we're getting these really long extended um, bullish moves that have some periods of convergence inside of them, but those convergence periods don't lead to consolidation. They just lead to new um, extensions of the move higher. All right, now let's take a look at um, all the Bollinger Bands over here. Um, again, you can kind of see how we're still, you know, doing very well. Let's look at the intraday chart. Uh, higher high and a higher low. Again, for the second straight day, we did not close above the prior day's high point. Uh, we actually did get up to a new weekly high, uh, but we did not form that. And we have that low point there. And, and then the low point is going to move up and be over here for quite a while. So um, it's not the greatest. It's not the biggest range, but at least it's still a very bullish pattern. And IWM just barely got a bullish pattern a few days ago. And now that range, I mean, it went from like very minuscule to now a very, very strong four week range, like one of your bigger four week ranges, as you can see the high points way high. Now lots of gaps, including this potential breakaway runaway uh, type gap. Um, but these two, you know, would be considered more common gaps. And again, the same thing, the low point's not gonna go very hot, might very much higher. Um, <clears throat> whereas there's a lot of strong momentum to push the high point higher there. If you look at uh, the, <clears throat> the volume and the trading range, <clears throat> again, above average vol uh, range. We've had above average ranges for four straight days. Uh, we did not get above average volume this time at 40 million shares trading hands. So when you look at that, 40 million shares is still pretty darn low. Um, and, and the bigger ranges has got us, remember we were so extremely low before those four days that it really took off to the upside since, but we're still sitting on the extreme, right? 80, 80 is the extreme. You can see the, the uh, range and the volumes there for the Russell. Remember the Russell's volume is so strong and the ranges are getting bigger. Um, so, I mean, a good, good breakout move. Eventually that range will end up peaking. Um, that breakout will peak and we'll start to move back lower and, and again, the issue is, um, you know, that you would like to, when you're starting a bullish move, you would like the eight, you know, more, there'd like to be some more room to come down from. This would be a very, very low peak uh, that we'd be coming down from, um, considering we're already pretty, pretty low as it is, even with this four day move, right? So again, relative to the past, you can see it's still pretty darn low. So there's not, you know, some of these have some big peaks. We have some room to fall. Uh, some room to fall there as we rally, right? As it rallies up to the upside, um, not the case right now. We're, you know, not much of a move higher uh, in this uh, sideways action. And so now there's not much room to fall as we continue to move up to the upside before we get extreme. Finally, the VIX jumped up today. Um, when you look at the VIX, jumped up above 13, uh, still below the 90% mark. The VIX is still above 80. Uh, so if you look at the VIX on this chart here, uh, it kind of stands out a little bit more. You can see a higher close for multiple uh, day or a couple weeks here, the highest close above um, all these average values. So the average 50 day value, 30 day, I mean, it, it closed above all those lines today. It was below it on Friday and now it's above all of it. The question is, you know, it's not that big of a deal as long as you're below the 200 day average value, which is at 14 and it continues to get really low. If you remember 15 is... Um, you know, it kind of, it's pretty low itself, and the 200-day value has been below 15 for quite a while. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so we don't have that, but 15 is usually, I don't know why it's not on there, but usually is, and 20 is the, uh, the other line that we usually set on there as well. Um, <clears throat> so, but 
you know, as you can see volatility has been kind of slowly rising uh, here lately when we came off that extreme low that we had, especially in the VIX just a couple of weeks ago. All right, now let's take a look at what's driving the price action today. And you can see the only the only asset class that really just like kicked butt was small cap stocks again. Uh, in fact, if I were to go back out to the last four days, uh, so one, two, three, four to the 10th um, and going forward from there, it's up almost 8%. Uh, small cap index is almost 8%. Real estate is up 5%, um, but nothing else. Like look at the queues. The queues are actually flat. Uh, S&P is up 1%. Um, but nothing close to 7.8%, right? So big move higher. The dollar's been uh, significantly lower, relatively speaking. Uh, and then bonds started off strong the first three days, and then big drop, as you saw today. They were the biggest um, uh, loser today. As you can see, yields made a run higher today. Not, nothing significant, still below moving averages. Near-term line is, and momentum line are both in the reversal zone. So remember, you have to get out of bearish territory, excuse me. You have to be out of bearish territory, and then you got two days to make it to the 80th percentile or not. So that's not happening, right? So, we, you know, we're still still pretty uh, bearish on long-term bonds. Uh, if you look at TLT itself, um, you can see, I mean, they're, we're at the point of control. We had a good run. It's still above moving averages, so it hasn't broken back down yet. Um so nothing really significant has changed. The dollar, um, again, has been bearish. It broke below the 200-day moving average um, on Thursday, and then, but didn't hold. And then it broke down to that bottom of that range on Friday, and then bouncing up slightly uh, today. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, but that's you know again we'll, we've seen the drop below the 50-day moving average or 200-day, excuse me, before, um, and we'll see if that continues to play out. And then finally. You saw commodities uh, were down today, breaking their 200-day moving average and working its way lower. And you can see uh, the big uh, culprit for that is crude oil. Though crude oil uh, not down very much and it's still above its 17-day moving average. Uh, so still in convergence mode with the MACD below its moving average. So Cassock's out of bullish territory and moving towards um, the lower half of the chart. Uh, but still not like not breaking down and you know, obviously you got very strong support there if we take a look at um, the uh, the breadth uh, of the markets today and that's kind of really the big uh, mover the big uh, the big story today is the breadth um, so let me update the new highs and new lows 622 new highs and new lows again uh, above 600 we've seen this before in December uh, there we saw it over here um, a couple of times here in March we haven't seen that previously right you have to go all the way back to November 2021 which again very similar very similar market environment to the end of 2021 in fact if you take a look at and I kind of showed you this earlier but if you take a look at that rate of change uh, and you go back to 2021 um, so instead of looking at the last four days because you notice here in 2021, here, let's look at the Russell 2000. Right here, we did have in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight day rally where we broke out, kind of very similar to this. So if I were to do an eight day rate of change on that, um, you can see it's a pretty significant move um, over over about eight and a half percent. Remember, we're up seven and a half right now, um, you know, for the four days. but. From an eight-day standpoint, that's a big move. So it kind of goes to show um, after these past four days, it's going to be really hard to get really big moves out of small caps for the next four days. Because then, you know, if we were to add another three or four percent, you're looking at the kind of moves that we came off the COVID lows, which is unreasonable. Um, you did have an eight-day rally here where we got up to 13 percent again with the reopening trade. This is the election, and then this is so this is the election results. Um, going into the election results, and then this is the uh, vaccine rollout, right? The next week, and the election certification in some states got you over 10%, and then ultimately up to a th almost 13% uh, over an eight day period. So we'll see how that turns out this go around, but as of right now, the la eight day returns a pretty high return, relatively speaking. Um, but, you know, again, about the same, it got it, like I said, up to eight and a half. Uh, was the return that we had there. So even that fake out had a pretty good return in a small amount of time 
only to come down eventually, you end up having a 9% drop over eight days, uh, completely reverse the move that we saw. So, you know, that's, you know, the, the fake out trade is still on the table, despite the fact that we were uh, just, you know, we've been like a lot of these oscillators, like the DMI and, and things are just at record highs. Uh, one other thing too, that kind of stands out uh, from this rotation trade, and if you look at the sector rotation, uh, here, let's go to the uh, sectors, US sectors. You can see again, um, techn on a weekly basis, technology is the only sector in the green now that your utilities has dropped down. But here's the daily. Uh, so you, XLK has been moving higher. XLY is there. You can see a lot of these sectors that were moving down have rebounded. So materials, industrials, utilities, real estate, financials, uh, all moving higher. Energy is moving lower. But interestingly enough, energy relative to S&P uh, was looking to break out. In fact, at the highs of the day, I tweeted out about this, the highs of the day, you were breaking above that 17-day moving average. And this is a, a ratio that's very highly negatively correlated to the S&P 500. So a change in direction on this coming off of what would be a divergent low point, right? A higher lows uh, with lower lows here. If we were to break up above these moving averages, break up above this peak, that's a pretty significant change in direction for this ratio that you would expect would not be bullish for the markets considering the negative correlation. So that's something to keep an eye on. Of course, the flip side of that would be uh, technology, right? So technology and how it's doing relative to the S&P 500. Again, you have a very similar divergence. This one is with, with obviously lower highs. Um, and you're flirting with breaking below this below the 17 day moving average and this ratio is very strongly correlated with the S&P 500 so um, you can kind of see some things that are kind of changing directions uh, on some important ratios energy being one technology being the other and then you can see some of these other cyclical areas starting to move up to the right again after being just a few days ago moving down right that everything was remember how everything was moving down again and technology was the only one going up. Well, now um, all these others are moving up and discretionary is kind of maintaining itself uh, in that position. You want the, the good move on the Russell again, uh, again, suggesting a breadth. Uh, whoops, it uh, goes to show, uh, shows that uh, you can see that we have um, the McClellan oscillator continue to move up stay not above it didn't hasn't gotten to 100 but it is above 35 so it's trending as trending level and you're almost back above 500 here which would be very very good from a trending standpoint not that we got you know usually when you get these little pullbacks like this it's an intermediate pullback we didn't get an intermediate pullback here we just kept going higher um, but still regardless and and we were negative negative on the oscillator this whole time we were rising um, but you know, regardless, we're showing it's it's showing patterns as if we were coming off an intermediate low point. So we'll take it uh, for what it's worth, uh, considering. And again, like I said, when you look at some other, um, like you saw the new highs being as strong as they are, the number of stocks above the 50-day moving average, flirting with getting above 350, actually has been above 350. Uh, 361 was the high today. Uh, yeah, 361 there before dropping down to 330. Uh, seven at the close with that late drop in the S&P. Uh, this is the number of stocks above the 50-day moving average, a big breakout above the, not just a 60% level, which is that green line, but the 70% uh, level. So nice, good move there. Uh, one thing uh, that is a little concerning is the high skew. The skew remains uh, at 150. In fact, the average is almost at 150, and that's usually not the best sign when the skew itself is at 150. Um, you know, we can see, we can be above 150 and just keep going like we did over here uh, going into the end of the year. So that's okay. Um, but 150 is a very high level for skew. Again, it means there's a lot of demand for deep out of the money puts, uh, which again means that there's a lot of man to cover uh, perceived fat tail risk. So bigger moves to the downside than what's um, typically anticipated. Right now, let's take a look at the sector moves here on this chart. So we'll come here to the sector rotation. And again, let's just go to the four last four days and then we'll look at today after. So here's the uh, last four days after the CPI report. Oh, here, let's just go like to 10 minutes. And you can see, okay, we have you know materials, energy, industrials, financials. 
you know these are your safe these the rotation like we talked about the rotation uh, into these cyclical areas that are not xlk xly and xlc which all three of them have been underperforming if not like falling on an absolute basis um, since uh, that CPR reports come out and you can see utilities and staples also lagging behind again this is very atypical of a falling yield environment falling yield environment usually these three sectors still outperform and then you but they're joined at the top by utilities and real estate generally and staples not this pattern so this is a very temporary pattern where we actually go up in the markets not by a lot only one percent um, but these sectors do go up by a lot and keep in mind one part of the reason why they're going up by a lot if you were to go back to uh, when the markets kind of uh, came off of that low point here sorry somewhere around here let me see if i can find that low point there we go so when the markets came off of you know let's just do a daily chart so i can see where the low point is so um it was over here so when we hit this low point on 419 so for from 420 on right there now you can see technology discretionary has been the biggest winners uh during this rally and until the last four days so until 710 right here you can see energy was the biggest loser materials had been down industrials has barely got a positive gain and financials were lagging behind every other sector so again it's a it's very much a oversold technical bounce um, on you know the small cap index relative to in fact if you look at the ratio here of the Q's relative to IWM uh, it ended up down on the 50-day moving average so we were so far above the 50-day moving average and we've dropped so sharply and now we're heading towards again this is a has generally been positively correlated so like we did last year we're headed towards that 200 day moving average here and we'll see if that ends up having you know a very strong negative cci very strong negative uh, dmi uh, very you know big significant below 40 for the first time in a while um so we're i mean we are we are dropping uh we are dropping here and this has been a nice little oversold bounce uh, on the Russell, so you see it better uh, when you flip it around. So this has been a nice oversold technical bounce on the Russell relative to the Qs. But again, uh, we if it starts to break through and really start to trend higher with an index that is typically very correlated uh, to the downside or uh, very negatively correlated, you can see when I mean, you look at a long-term weekly chart like this. Um, you know, it's it's traditionally very negatively correlated with the markets. You know, if it starts to trend higher, then we're looking for, you know, a you know what ultimately could be a you know some signs of weakness broadly, uh, not just relative weakness like we've seen here in the past week, but you know broader weakness uh, where everything starts to drop and IWM and all those cyclical sectors just hold up better because they they didn't go up very much uh, during. Um, early the rally we've had earlier this year remember as bullish as the market has been if I were to go uh, year to date uh, on this go year to date you have uh, XLK and XLY still the biggest winners like materials again going back to 79 you can see in uh, financials had a pretty decent year uh, outpacing everything but you know these two sectors um, but then you have industrials and uh, materials especially in energy all lagging behind most every other sector uh, than real estate down there and then again the bounce we've had in the past few days has really just been an oversold technical bounce but still nowhere near the returns i mean utilities is still outpacing most of those cyclical areas except for financials so it kind of goes to show the type of market we've been in this, this for this calendar year and you know the idea that any kind of rotation any kind of weakness where we start to pull back on this 18%, which um, we don't necessarily seasonally get, you know, like significant weakness here. Um, but the bullishness that we typically get, uh, we generally have for maybe about another week before at best we start to go sideways and start to produce some volatility there. And you can see the VIX, um, the VIX typically, again, in about another week, typically bottoms out and then we really make a run on the VIX from pretty strong negative levels on a year-to-date basis seasonally to pretty strong positive levels before we finish on the decline going into the end of the year.
All right, now let's take a look at our trade idea of the day. It's in the financial sector, actually. It's uh, cart, uh, Capital One uh, Finance is jumping up today, like just about everything else in that area. Dark green shading, the green line had been bearish, relatively sideways, and then breaking out the big uh, momentum and near-term move into the upper reversal zone. The intermediate line, which had been rolling over before that crossover, has now turned back up and is now in bullish territory. 5% above the moving average for the first time in a while since we've been bullish, really. <clears throat> so nice, strong breakout move that we see here. You can look at the weekly chart for Capital One. And you see a good, nice, good bullish candle after, you know, relatively bearish. Then transition from the green arrow last week. Now the PPO is starting to turn up again with a nice, good bullish candle this go around. Obviously, you have three green arrows for the past few days. Um, uh, but the big move here today, as you can see, and a big jump in volume today above average, breaking out above all these highs. Uh, so nice little rally there. Uh, if you take a look at some of these other oscillators like the DMI, you'll notice that uh, there's a nice breakout pattern on the DMI uh, above 30, below 20, uh, above 30 on the positive indicator, below 30, uh, 20, excuse me, on the negative indicator. ADX, which was very low, is starting to rise up again. Uh, take a look at the RSI and the CCI. And you can see it's breaking out. It's bullish territory above 60, above 200 on the uh, CCI. You can see the weekly CCI had been below minus 100. It is now working its way and almost back up above positive 100. So potentially starting a new long-term leg higher. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, Ichimoku cloud, and we haven't uh, started a new, we, you know, we have started a new trend, but it's very weak. Uh, barely above one, barely above 50. We are above the cloud now, uh, and you can see the rate of change is clearly positive there. And then finally, looking at the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Channels, you can see we broke out up above the band in the big way today and above the upper Keltner Channel. Uh, so big move. The, the, some positive momentum. Still got red dots. Have had red dots for quite a while. So, but it looks like we're close to getting the green dots, right? Which would be the suggestion. That there's a breakout come or a breakout this is a breakout move and a new trend coming so i decided to come over here to the august expiration sell the low 20s delta uh, buy one strike away so sell the 155 buy the 150 with um does have earnings coming up uh, but to put our normal uh, risk on getting about a three to one reward or risk ratio and there's the flexibility i have uh, in case it doesn't work out so you can see kind of a common trade you know with the breakout so you, you can kind of see the types of trades we've been doing in the last so many market outlook videos and so far i've been doing pretty well um, considering and this is kind of following that same footsteps and and kind of a sector that's not your typical xlk xly xlc sector all right well that does it for today you've heard from me now and i want to hear from you use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes you to our market outlook forum Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread. And let's keep this conversation going in between videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Join us at marketscholars.com for free. Follow and like me on Twitter and Facebook as well. Have a great rest of your Monday night, everybody. And we'll see you all tomorrow.